All right, so it's finally springtime. The temperature is starting to rise as we come out of winter, and it's really exciting because we get to go outside and experience the outdoors after this long winter. And it's also really exciting because the trees and other plants are starting to sprout their leaves, and we're getting a glimpse at this green after months of just brown. We get to see all, it's a beautiful time of year, um, and these beautiful plants also start to emerge, but sometimes the most beautiful plants are actually the most dangerous. Um, and spring marks the beginning of my assault against invasive plants. <laughs> so this is a picture of what you might expect a typical northeastern forest to look like. At a first glance, you don't really notice anything that um, stands out to you. But for me, when I look a little closer, I see this, invasive plants. This is a picture of a vine literally strangling a tree to death. Who would have thought? Um, and as the name suggests, invasive plants are typically introduced to an ecosystem and directly threaten native species. Uh, so for example, Invasive plants typically aren't introduced on purpose, but by accident. If somebody goes backpacking across Asia, for example, and their hiking boots get clogged with mud, and in that mud is a single seed, and they come back home, go hiking on a local trail, that mud plops out along with that seed, and that seed starts to sprout and grow, mature creates more seeds and those seeds disperse. It begins to create this new populate, population of this new plant in a new ecosystem. And the fact that it comes from this place other than um, its original location, it has no natural predators. It's not in its natural ecosystem. And that allows invasive plants to really grow in the first place and dominate an ecosystem. Uh, when once invasive plants really get a foothold in, eco in an ecosystem, they really start to block the light from native uh, plants. They um, suck up vital nutrients and change the soil chemistry altogether. And it makes it really difficult for native plants to eke out an existence. So the problem with invasive plants, sure the invasive plants are the problem, but the problem really stems from humans ourselves. Um, before the pilgrims came in the 1600s, forests were pristine and untouched. But once settlers started to come, things started to change. Farmers clear-cutted forests and uh, started cultivating the land altering microclimates and altering the soil altogether. And as farming started to phase out over the years and forests started to grow back, I'm sure a lot of you have seen rock walls like that. That's where cultivated land, land once resided. Forests started to grow back. Invasive plants, which were more adapted to these altered conditions, really got a strong foothold in these ecosystems and have been giving native plants a hard time coexisting. So this image right here, this graphic, represents the, about, the over 3,500 uh, species documented in New England. And in 2015, the New England Wildflower Society estimated that 31% of all documented species in New England are non-native, and 10% of those are invasive and directly uh, influence and affect native species. So here's the big picture, but when you look at just native species, this is what you see. It's, it doesn't look that stark of a contrast, but it has major reverberations. So this is a picture of me chopping down uh, a buckthorn tree not too long ago, this last uh, snowstorm. So the invasive, se invasive species season has already begun for me. But when I tell people that I spend hours upon hours uh, in the woods cutting invasive species and getting all sweaty, it's a, it's a good workout. They look at me, maybe as some of you are looking at me right now, kind of, they, they judge me. I'm kind of outside of the box and True, yeah. What other 17-year-old teenage boys go outside plucking garlic mustard, sawing down buckthorn trees? <laughs> Not too many. Me, I'm the only one I know. Um, but I can tell you, even though it is fun for me, uh, it's not just for fun, it's got a much bigger meaning. 
So this is a picture of a typical food web in an ecosystem. And as you see, plants are at the, at the bottom of the ecosystem. They supply ecosystems with most of the energy throughout the ecosystem and are responsible for the life of others. Herbivores eat plants, uh, carnivores eat the herbivores which eat the plants and the energy is felt throughout the whole entire ecosystem and once you introduce an invasive plant to this ecosystem then the native plants start dying off and the native animals that depend on the native plants also start to die off because they don't have that anymore and it really causes um, a big disruptance, dis disruptance in the ecosystem. A lot of money is spent on protecting animals in a given ecosystem in, in a given ecosystem, but in fact a lot of our efforts should be focused on protecting native plants and uh, controlling invasives. So for example, this is a plant that you're all probably somewhat familiar with, uh, milkweed, and it's critical to the life cycle of the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly lays its eggs on the milkweed, the milkweed provides food, it's the only food source for monarch caterpillars, and it's as I said, crucial for their life cycle. And once you introduce an invasive that threatens species like the monarch, it has big effects on the entire ecosystem. So this is a picture of Japanese knotweed, another invasive plant. When that is introduced right here, you see little sprouts, no big deal. Give that a little water and some sunlight, then you get this. It grows very thick and high and chop and, and it really prevents any milkweed from growing. When the milkweed when the milkweed disappears, monarch caterpillars disappear, butterflies disappear, and all the species that um, depend on depend on monarch butterflies also begin to disappear. And it's felt throughout the entire ecosystem. So we'll go back to this picture of me chopping down buckthorn in my backwoods not too long ago. Um, throughout my life and my uh, history in working with invasive species, I really gained a keen awareness for um, uh, the effect on invasive species that um, is felt throughout the entire ecosystem. Throughout the past year I've been working with the Groton Conservation Commission, going to local parcels of land and helping to remove invasive species before they get a big foothold in the ecosystem and cause a lot of damage. And through working with them I've gained this keen sense of awareness that if anything you gain from my my presentation, I hope that's what you get, realizing that these small little plants can have a huge impact on an ecosystem. And this is a picture of me not too long ago. It hasn't just been this past year that I've been involved with invasives, but really most of my life. Um, it started with my educators in elementary school. In elementary school, I was part of my Roots and Shoots club, um, and I went, we went back to a vernal pool, and we saw these big vines, bittersweet vines, growing and strangling these trees and we were cutting them down and that's when I was really introduced to this topic of invasives and the effect they the effect that they can have um, so I'm I spend my time outdoors a lot and after being introduced to that concept I've been able to really see that effect that they have on ecosystems and that's me at the water chestnut pole on the Nashua River right in Pepperell um, afterwards if any of you are interested come contact me at intermission <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the, the idea of getting this keen sense of awareness for um, the impact of, uh, on invasives is really what I hope you gain from this presentation. As you guys walk day to day past, I don't know, a forest or what, whatever ecosystem, many of you I'm sure know what this flower is, but I'm not sure if you are aware that it's invasive. Purple loosestrife, it was planted by a gardener as a decorative plant, but seeds eventually spread. More seeds led to more seeds and now they're occupying a lot of aqua uh, marsh wetlands in Massachusetts, all of New England and the country, and they're causing a really big problem. Same goes with bittersweet that I've talked about. People cut bittersweet that they see in the fall, create wreaths out of it, and birds end up going to that wreath, eating the, bird, uh, eating the seeds, and those seeds get dispersed everywhere. When you're done with the wreath, you throw it in your woods, and those seeds end up populating your backwoods, and bittersweet gets everywhere, and it's a really big problem. 
and also multi-flora rose. Pretty soon you'll start, start seeing these flowers everywhere. They're probably one of the most beautiful uh, flowers that you'll see in the springtime, but as you're walking through the woods and you get prickers on you, thorns, that's what these are. They're really pain in the butts. <laughs> So my message today isn't, I'm not, this isn't a call to action for you to um, get out there and actively pull invasive plants. It's not what this is. It's more getting your awareness set on that point. Um, but that's great if you do. Talk to me afterwards. Um, but there are some really easy things that you can do. Planting native species is one of them. When you go to a nursery, most of those species are typical nursery species. They come from all over the world and are for the purpose of planting but some native species are just as beautiful maybe even more beautiful and have more beneficial impacts on the surrounding area for instance asters the blue flower right there and cardinal flower if you plant those in your garden they'll start to attract a lot of native native pollinators such as hummingbirds and butterflies and those Pollinators are crucial to the life cycles of native plants and those support the native animals as well. So it's really something easy that you guys can do. Um, so that being said, you guys all have a great, you, you can all have the potential to have a great impact on the well-being of our forests and I've adapted a well-known quote. Um, let's make our forests great again. Thank you.